You know, in the other video, I, I didn't know how to use it very well. And I wore it yesterday and I was like, mm, no. I've been doing this every day and I love it. Okay, I told you in the beginning, I was just using one. I'm gonna be using a few. I forgot about this part. I've used what? <laughs> Three powders. I didn't know I had it. <laughs> very, very lightning. So I've been getting a lot of questions about setting powders and how to use them. So I wanted to do a full video just on that. So you are gonna see me do my makeup, not so much in depth. I'm just really gonna focus on the areas in which I use a setting powder. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you do that. Follow on all socials, links are here. And the links to the products that I show you are going to be below. The main highlight of this video is going to be this Sephora translucent setting powder. I like it because it's loose. It is very finely milled. It's invisible, it's beautiful, and you're gonna see that. So you can again find all the links to products down below. So in the very beginning to prime the face, of course, you can use a primer depending on the day and the environment. We discussed this in both a shorts video and I feel like I did a YouTube video on it too. Just look at my channel. You'll find it. Okay. I say this because you can of course do a primer. I've done my skincare routine. I've done SPF, right? And I can do a primer and then set it with powder or sometimes I just set my face with powder and not a primer. It all depends on the environment. Like I said, where I'm going, what I'm going to be doing. And in this case for today, I'm just going to take some of the product that's on the inside of the cap and put it on my T-zone, which is normally where I get oily. Now this is not going to give me high power modification, but it's going to do something and it's enough for me. I don't expect, this is the Sephora 59 brush. I like it. You can use it for a few things, blush or powder or setting powder. It's a powder, right? So I don't expect to be too hot and sweaty today. So I'm going to use this. If I was expecting to be in the heat a lot, today I would use a primer and then use this. I am going to go with my eyebrows because in my eyelid because I don't like when that is greasy because then applying my brow product is a headache. The NARS foundation deep three is too pinky gray looking on me. I'm not going to wear that right now. I wore it yesterday and I was like mm, no. what I have been enjoying is this Patrick Ta cream foundation. Did a whole video on it. Make sure you watch that. I'm going to just apply my foundation and concealer squeezing my sponge out to make sure it's not too wet and then we will apply some more setting powder in a second. And I'm using a sponge, you'll see in the video why. I'll link the sponge and the foundation below. Highlighting contour is done. And in this step, you can certainly use the setting powder to set really your whole entire face. But I like to go with something darker in the contour because I want to deepen my contour. I always like to do that. I normally use a different setting powder under my eyes. I've been, I know in the other video, I, I didn't know how to use it very well, but I have been loving the Huda Beauty Glow Wish Luminous Pressed Powder because this is just so good. So actually I told you in the beginning, I was just using one. I'm going to be using a few. I forgot about this part. So let me show you how I use this. And we are still going to use the other loose setting powder from Sephora you'll see in a second. So in this step I like to take the Sephora 99 brush. These brushes are really good and of course you got to make sure that there's no creasing under the eyes and keep them looking like this. I take this one only under the eye because it's luminous. <laughs> it's like a highlighter. It looks so good though. It was so strange for me in the beginning but I've been doing this every day and I love it. So I'm patting this just right here under the eye twisting to keep the form or the shape of the highlight okay and it's gonna all come together once I apply my face powder, for which I've done a separate video, but you may see a little bit of that here in this video. So pressing and stamping it to just stay right there, you feel me? Then I wipe this off and use a different pressed powder because this one is not luminous, and I put this in the other highlighted areas. I like to use this because it has a color to it, okay? Your setting powder can be with a color. It can have a color to it, a tan color that matches your skin tone well enough where it's going to highlight it, but not be too much. You know, I like to do everything really stark so temper yourself if you're going to follow the products that I'm using or you can just play it safe and do a translucent like the Sephora like the Laura Mercier or any other one that doesn't have any color and it really just sets down whatever you've done so whatever shade of highlight concealer that, you, that you've used or the shade of your foundation whatever it is whatever shade you've used it'll remain that color because the setting powder you're going to use would be translucent invisible clear right whereas with this one I'm using two different colored powders so it is lightening some more which is what I want to do and it may be confusing when I'm saying setting powder because really the powders can be a loose powder of powder foundation 
or a product that's called a setting powder. But then even with the products that are called setting powders, they are, like I said, the translucent, the ones that have colors to them. To me, it's very confusing, right? It's like in a different video, I talked about highlighters and really there are different versions of them. Anyway, not to confuse you any further, but right now what I'm going to do is use a setting powder. It's a powder foundation and I'm going to put that in my contour areas because I like to, like I said, deepen that up. So this is the Elf Cosmetics Camo Powder Foundation. The shade is Rich 660N. It is very dark and you can certainly use this as a powder foundation if you have deeper skin than I do. I love this color to set my contour because it deepens it even further. So I love the deepness of this particular shade. I did a video specifically on these powder foundations where I used three of them. One on my face, one in the highlighted areas, one to contour and it was really nice. So make sure you watch that if you're curious. But I like to use this to deepen up the face as an actual contour. Okay, so there's that. So, so far I've used what? <laughs> three powders and I'm going to use a fourth one as a face powder, which you'll see in a bit. So going over all the contour to deepen all that out. And while I'm here, I might as well just show you this face powder. <laughs> <laughs> this is our Turn Up The Base Versatile Ch Patrick Todd Dark 4G is the shade and this is the Sephora 80 brush. It's a bronzer brush, but it's so big and ju juicy. I can't even talk. It's so big and juicy. I love to use it as a face powder brush. See, if you watch my video where I used an Amazon brush set on my whole face, then you'll see how I was going through each of the brushes and explaining how they could be used. You're not always confined to what is written on the brush. Of course, this would be a great bronzer brush, but for my face, this is humongous. This is not gonna work. I love it as a face powder brush because it's humongous and it gets everywhere. And I use it at an angle so it looks like that. <laughs> I just did blush and I'm using the LYS Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush. It's a satin matte, so it's not too matte, it's not too dewy, it's in between. So you see a bit of a shine and my skin is just really juicy and hydrated, so it's gonna shine nonetheless. So what I like to do is take my Sephora Translucent Powder, take some on the inside of the cap, tap off the excess, right? Here we have some of the product and you can just go right over the cheek area to mattify it. Now you might be thinking like, what's the point of that? Well, it depends. If you want to keep it satin matte or if you use a dewy cream blush and you like that, keep it like that. But this is another way that you could use your setting powder if you wanted to just tone things down a bit. Now, you are probably noticing that under my eye is still looking highlighted because of the product that I used. You don't have to use something like that. If you used a matte color like I used under my cheek, then it wouldn't look so shiny. But this is something that I sometimes do because I feel like it. Again, all of this is really based on your preference. Oh, and another thing too is I will at this stage mattify over my brow in my eyelid again because I'm about to do my eyebrows and I like it to be dry. The eyebrow pencil goes on a lot easier when the brow area is dry. When the brow forehead area is greasy, the pencil be sliding, like I can't, I can't see it. It's like it's not working, it's, it's annoying. So I'm going to do that part right now. And then when I do my eyebrows, I take some of the powder and set right underneath here. Again, anywhere you put the concealer. And of course, over my lid again, the powder is so fine that you see that I've applied it to my lid area so many times at this point and it's not gonna cake up or get gross, you see? And then I'm gonna do my eyeshadow and then we will be done. The look is done on the outside of my lip. I have the Lip Bar Savage inside this Birthday Bestie by Maybelline. I found a new shade. I had it, I didn't know I had it. <laughs> and this robe is tan, I love it. I got a tan version of the waffle robes that I love and I know you've seen a million times. I still need to put on my mascara on the bottom lashes. I almost forgot about that. I was just really excited to come on and show you the finished look. What I did wanna come on in here and tell you is that at this point, my face to me looks fantastic. Nothing else is needed. It's light in the in all the right places. However, let's say you got to this stage and you still felt shiny, then you could take some more of the Sephora translucent powder. Tapping off the excess, here you see the product. And usually my T-zone is the shiniest. So here you go. You can go over everything very lightly. Very lightly. We're not pressing too hard, okay? Just very, very lightning and it all looks good nothing is cakey nothing is strange what do you think about this look i want you to comment and let me know follow me on all socials of course i'll do my bottom mascara because that's necessary i'll leave you here with two videos to watch and i'll see you in the next one bye